Good day and welcome. Today, we're diving into the world of energy in cells and batteries. Here's a question to get you thinking. How does an electrical cell create electricity that powers everyday devices like a remote or a flashlight? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some fun, thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how much you've learned, it's a great way to build confidence. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. A cell is a chemical system in which certain chemical reactions cause the flow of electricity which is brought about by means of an external circuit. This means that inside the cell, chemical substances react to create electrical energy. However, this energy can only flow when the cell is connected to an external circuit, such as wires and a device like a light bulb or buzzer. The external circuit provides a path for the electric charges, electrons, to travel through. Without this connection, the electrons cannot move, and the cell cannot produce usable electricity. So, the external circuit is essential for the electrical energy to leave the cell and power something. An electrical cell usually contains two solid pieces called electrodes, made from different materials, placed in a solution called an electrolyte. Because the electrodes are made of different metals, one becomes the positive terminal, pole, and the other becomes the negative terminal. These terminals allow electric current to enter or leave the cell. The electrolyte is a liquid or paste that conducts electricity and contains tiny charged particles called ions. When the electrodes are connected through a circuit, a chemical reaction starts inside the cell. This reaction causes electrons to move, creating a flow of electrical charge through the external circuit, which we use to power things like remote controls, calculators, and torches. A cell contains chemicals with stored energy, called chemical potential energy. When a cell is connected to an electric circuit, this chemical energy is changed first into electrical energy and then into kinetic energy, as charges or electrons move through the circuit. The ability of a cell to push electrons through a circuit is called its voltage, measured in volts, V. Voltage tells us how much energy a cell provides to each electron moving through the circuit. Electricity always flows through a circuit from an area with extra electrons, the negative terminal, to an area with fewer electrons, the positive terminal. The negative terminal has more electrons than the positive terminal. This difference in charge between the negative and positive terminals of a cell is called potential difference or voltage. Without this potential difference, electrons wouldn't flow, and there would be no electricity. Eventually, the chemical energy inside the cell is used up, and the cell stops working and we say the cell is flat. Some cells cannot be reused once flat, but others can be recharged using special chargers connected to electricity mains. The cells used in everyday items such as torches, toys, and radios are called dry cells. They contain a carbon rod and a zinc casing as electrodes, with an electrolyte paste. Each cell has two terminals, clearly marked with a plus for positive and a minus for negative. A car battery, on the other hand, is an example of a wet cell because it contains liquid electrolyte. Even though wet and dry cells look different, they both convert chemical energy into electrical energy using the same principles. Inside every cell, Chemical reactions only occur when the cell's terminals are connected through a circuit, allowing electrons to flow from the negative terminal, anode, to the positive terminal, cathode. Interestingly, we show the conventional direction of current as moving from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, opposite to the actual electron flow. To measure the voltage produced by a cell, we use an instrument called a voltmeter, which measures potential difference in volts, V.
When we connect two or more cells together, we form a battery. This is sometimes done to increase the amount of energy available to power a device. There are two main ways of connecting cells in a battery, in series and in parallel, and each method affects the battery's voltage and performance differently. When cells are connected in series, the positive terminal of one cell is joined to the negative terminal of the next. In this arrangement, the voltage is added together, so the total voltage is the sum of the voltage of each individual cell. This produces more energy to push the charges through the circuit, giving the device more power. For example, if you connect three 1.5 volt cells in series, the total voltage will be 4.5 volts. This means the charges carry more energy, and your device can get more power. However, the downside is that if one cell stops working, the entire circuit will stop functioning, just like a broken link in a chain. In a parallel connection, the positive terminals of all the cells are connected together, and the negative terminals are also connected together. In this case, the voltage remains the same as that of a single cell, but the current is shared between the cells, so each cell does less work. This means the cells last longer, which is useful for devices that don't need a lot of power but need to run for a long time. The effective voltage in parallel is calculated as the total of the cells divided by the number of cells, and this helps reduce the strain on each individual cell. For example, if you have three cells and each cell is 1,5 volts connected in parallel, the overall voltage of the battery will be the total of the cells for 0,5 volts divided by 3. This gives an overall voltage of 1,5. So, the voltage in parallel does not add up like it does in series. This reduces the strain on each cell and helps them last longer. You can think of it this way, in a series, the effective voltage per cell equals total voltage divided by the number of cells. This equals to 1,5 volts divided by 3 giving 0,5 volts per cell load. This shows that each cell is supplying only one-third of the work, which keeps them from draining quickly. We have come to the end for today. Today, we have seen that cells and batteries provide the power needed in appliances. Before we go, please attempt the following questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. This is an important section that consolidates what you have learned. In the next video, we will be looking at making electric cells. Did you know lemons can be used to make cells? For more on this be sure to check out the link for this in the description for more videos. Also, please do not forget to like and subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. Otherwise, thank you for watching and keep well.